Special Weapons Operative Jones 219 and Jones 324 were in trouble. They knew it. The enemy knew it. All day long, their emplacement had been the target of the main push. This had meant that they were the main target of the bombardment from the enemy. Hours of shelling, death falling amongst them without warning or without respite. In the moments before the assaults, the guns would fall silent. All ears still rung from the impacts, and it would take a good few minutes before they even noticed that the barrage had ended. But when they did understand, all then got up from their huddled positions and raised their guns over the edge of the emplacement, ready for the headlong charging masses to appear. Thrice had this happened already this day. Hours of shelling punctuated by minutes of frantic firing, hoping to keep the ravening hordes of the traitor scum back. A long war on an almost barren world. It had bemused all that the Imperium would shed so many lives, so many resources, for what seemed a useless rock. But fight they did. For they did not know the resources in the ground, the strategic import of the world that their masters in the command tents were all too aware of. Jones 219 had been designated shooter, Jones 324 loader and support. A good thing, because 219 was clumsy with canisters, yet had the eyes of a hawk, and 324 was careful, but too reserved and considered to be aggressive enough to make the best use of the weapon in their team. A plasma gun. A good one. An old relic that had seen more battles than their entire regiment put together. But today, Beth, as they called her, was working overtime. The enemies who attacked did so with all of the resources they had garnered in their uprising, and makeshift tanks and APCs had been cobbled together or converted from old mining equipment and vehicles. But despite their ramshackle makeup, they were still lethal. As their brothers in the line shot their las guns at the hordes of mad cultists who charged them, Jones and Jones took aim on the larger targets, and they had reaped a great toll from the enemy this day. Two APCs, five bikes, two of their tank things, and more than a hundred individual cultists, for though the weapon was designed for the larger things, it worked just as well on the small. And thus a Jones and Jones shone today. But the last wave of weirdos to attack the lines was not the same. There were things that with multiple arms that slunk through the hordes, leapt from them when they reached the emplacement, and were terrors to defeat when amongst them. Just three had managed to get in amongst the lower lines thus far, but they had taken scores of men with them. So it was that Jones and Jones now targeted them. 219 was desperate to take some of them out, his blood pumping in his ears, his heart the only thing he could hear. So as he desperately shot, the things would leap to the side. One taunted him, its multiple arms swaying in the wind as it stood atop a burnt-out vehicle. But when shot at, it bounded backwards, not forwards, always in view of Jones and Jones. 219 shot again and again, barely missing the thing and getting closer with each shot. But he was so frantic that he could not hear the desperate pleas of Jones 324 to slow down, to take stock, to let his weapon cool. He did not hear the rising buzz from it, the high-pitched squeal it gave off. Thus it was that when Jones 219 had the being in his sights, had it banged to rights, he pressed the trigger with furious abandon, desperate to kill this horror. And it was then that the ancient weapon did what plasma weapons always do when overheated. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Voldemort, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and war gear of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future. Today, we will be discussing one of the most dramatic, cinematic, and hilarious of the weapons of those days, plasma weapons. Hilarious seems an odd word to use for this high-tech weapon of annihilation, but have no fear, gentle listener, all will become clear later. As usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Plasma weapons are highly potent and destructive, direct energy weapons utilized in many forms by the advanced intelligent races of the Milky Way galaxy. Plasma weapons work by delivering pulses of searing energy and superheated matter that have been transmuted into a gaseous plasma state that carries an electrical charge. 
The plasma bolts fired by these weapons explode on impact and generate the destructive heat of a small sun. With the sheer amount of energy released by the impact of superheated plasma is often enough to completely vaporize the target. Plasma weapons vary greatly in form and size, ranging from small and compact plasma pistols to huge starship batteries that can obliterate entire cities in a single salvo. Against all forms of armored infantry and light vehicles, the superheated bolts fired by smaller plasma weapons impact with the fury of a supernova, scything through steel, flesh and bone as if they were nothing. Due to the enormous temperatures and deadly energies that plasma weapons generate when fired, most such weapons are prone to overheating, destabilization and misfire, particularly those deployed by the Imperium of Man, which no longer has a firm command of technology. This unfortunate quality makes a plasma weapon potentially as deadly to the wielder as it is to the target. However, the sheer power and deadliness of plasma weapons often outweigh the hazards that come with their use. Plasma weapons operate using a raw plasma fuel, which consists of highly dangerous and volatile hydrogen, compressed and contained precariously within reinforced flasks in a gaseous or liquid state. These plasma flasks are potentially lethal objects in their own right, and it was almost surely a plasma flasks whose handling rights were rushed that gave birth to the Imperial Plasma Grenade. For smaller Imperial Plasma weapons, plasma flasks are allowed for 10 shots to be fired before reloading. When a handheld plasma weapon is fired, hydrogen fuel is fed into a miniature fusion reactor core contained within the weapon's mechanism and superheated to extreme temperatures in a highly energized state of matter known as plasma, the fuel of the stars themselves. The generated plasma is held in the weapon's core by powerful electromagnetic containment fields. When fired, the fields dilate open and the plasma is ejected via the coils of a linear magnetic accelerator as a bolt of superheated matter akin to a solar flare in appearance and temperature. For this reason, plasma weapons are also known as sun guns by the soldiers of the Imperium. Plasma bolts that are fired are encased in a magnetic containment field that prevents them from dissipating before reaching their target. Once the plasma comes into contact with a solid material, the magnetic field ruptures and vents the superheated energy of the plasma onto the target often vaporizing the enemy outright. Most plasma weapons suffer from the problem of overheating, primarily due to the immense amount of heat generated by the stored plasma. When the weapon reaches critical temperatures, excess heat must be released, for containing it within the weapon can prove catastrophic. This additional heat is often vented into the surrounding area via energy cooling ducts and exhaust vents, as there are very few forms of proper cooling apparatus capable of neutralizing the excess heat. Even with this solution, however, continual firing almost inevitably overloads these functions, and it is not uncommon for plasma weapons to dangerously overheat and for the ravaging energies held in check by their magnetic containment fields to burst from their restraints and pour from the weapon's specialized cooling vents in a cloud of superheated vapor. Though the weapon itself will remain intact in such an event, the unfortunate soul wielding it often does not prove as lucky. Despite this danger, plasma weapons are usually such a rare and valued technology for the Imperium, it is often considered better that the weapon survive than the wielder. In extreme circumstances, the core of plasma weapons can suddenly melt down and explode, whether this be the result of excessive firing or the result of a flaw during manufacture. Should the weapon's casing crack or the magnetic containment field fail, the fire will have only a fraction of a second before the gun turns into a ball of blazing energy in his hands, consuming itself with the heat of a star and vaporizing everything within reach. In addition to the dangers of an overheat, Handheld Imperial plasma weapons are difficult to reload. Only with the requisite prayers should their hydrogen flasks be screwed into place, as their unstable ammunition is all too prone to spilling or fouling the plasma intakes. An incorrectly attached flask can cause the weapon to explode the first time it is fired, as an empty or partially filled magnetic chamber creates inescapable pressure that will tear the weapon apart in addition to its user. Removing a flask is also dangerous, as even a small amount of plasma leaking out of a broken seal or an incorrectly closed valve can burn away a hand or cost the shooter several of his fingers. 
For this reason, Imperial Plasma guns are slow and difficult to load and unload on the battlefield. Despite their drawbacks, plasma weapons have remained part of the Imperium's arsenal for thousands of Terran years, since at least its inception. Such technology was far better understood during the dawn of the Imperium, if still somewhat unsafe. By the time of the Horus Heresy in the early 31st millennium, plasma weapon technology was at a dangerous phase in its development. Plasma reactors were in widespread use, and the giant weapons mounted on titans and spacefaring vessels were a simple outgrowth of the systems needed to create the reactors. Plasma weapons which could be carried and used by a space marine legionary in power armor were still prone to overheating and leaking energized plasma onto their unfortunate users. Nonetheless, the devastating power of plasma weaponry made it too potent to abandon, and many space marine legions utilized it in a limited fashion anyway. In the dark days of the heresy itself, the desperate need for ever more potent armaments pushed early plasma weapons to the battlefront more and more, regardless of the risks involved. Towards the end of the heresy, the tech priests of Mars resolved the immediate problems of plasma weapons. By slowing the recharge mode of the weapons, they found they could maintain the integrity of their magnetic field containing the energizing plasma. This prevented catastrophic leaks detonating the whole weapons. The slower recharge cycle also meant that overheating was kept to a minimum by the weapon's coolant system. The resulting plasma weapons were relatively safe and reliable, but suffered from a slow recharge rate which limited their effectiveness. Space Marine commanders were far from happy at the compromise, but the number of catastrophic meltdowns experienced with the older weapons made plasma weapons too dangerous for the Space Marines to continue using otherwise. In the late 41st millennium, it is an honor to carry such weapons into battle and to be trusted to make sure every searing shot counts, though most of the weapons in use at present are relics of technology based on the ancient, less reliable design that predated the Horus Heresy. Based on the secrets of the sacred STC database, it is a design that has never been developed or improved on by the post-heresy Adeptus Mechanicus. Indeed, the very thought of trying to mitigate the flaws of plasma weapons would be repellent to the followers of the Machine God. By the grace of the Omnissiah, these weapons fulfill a role within the God Emperor's armies, and to change this role in any way would be to invite mayhem and disorder. So plasma weapons are crafted just as they have been for untold centuries each finding its way into the hands of a resolute space marine or an ungrateful guardsman. The Eldar also use plasma technology. Whilst the Adepts of the Imperium have attempted to harness plasma technology for millennia, only the Eldar have truly mastered its potential. For unlike the extremely hazardous plasma weapons used by Imperial troops, the plasma weapons of the Eldar are both sophisticated and safe to use. This is no more evident than with their star cannons and similar weapons, which capture the fury of burning plasma in complex containment fields, which are never at risk of overheating or explosion. To the Eldar, it is further testament to the idiosity of man, that he has created a weapon that frequently maims or even kills his own. The Tyranids The Tyranids use bioplasma, generated by some of their greater blaster beasts, as some call them. And it's quite an interesting topic, which we shall get onto in more depth in the future. The Tau Empire The Tau, whilst a relatively young race in the grand scale of time, have advanced extraordinarily rapidly, and have already perfected many different forms of plasma weapon technology, and use it to a great extent on the battlefield. The Tau variant of plasma weapon technology, which they refer to as pulse weapons, is commonly utilized by the warriors of the Tau Empire's military fire cast. Pulse weapons can make use of micro-pulsed induction fields to propel a particle across a distance. The particle reacts by breaking down after being exposed to the effects of the field to create a plasma pulse as it leaves the barrel, thus allowing for lethal bursts of plasma to be fired over astonishing ranges. Whilst plasma weapons technology is used by many of the advanced intelligent races of the Milky Way galaxy, despite its unstable nature, the Tau favor this form of the technology, which foregoes a degree of stopping power for the increased safety of the operator. End quote. Plasma weapons. In many ways, they're very demonstrative of the ethos and perspective, priorities and drives of the races that deploy them. As we have heard, Humanity still uses these weapons despite them not being safe, not really. Hence the Imperium shows its true priorities, its true goals. 
for to use such weapons means that they are emphasizing the destruction of the enemy over the safety of their own people, a recurrent theme in the forces of mankind. Life is cheap, but your war gear is not. You are the delivery system of the destructive power of your arms, but other than that, you are truly worthless as the hives of the Imperium can generate an almost limitless amount of human bodies to carry these weapons into battle, yet the generation of this hardware is far more limited as the Mechanicum's worlds cannot generate them at nearly the same rate. The Elder have mastered plasma and its safe application millions of years ago, and for them it is another safe tool, about as dangerous to them as the armor of the Space Marine is to him, Ari not at all and with it they are delicate destroyers. The Tau arm their standard troops with a type of plasma weapon, pulse rifles and carbines being generated in such abundance. These weapons may be long range and developing constantly, but there will always be a line where the Tau will optimize, but then pull back from, to make the weapons safe. They actually value their people, the Tau and their allies, far more than the toys that they carry the total opposite of the Imperium. But this is due to their culture and Empire having the resource abundances totally opposite to the Imperium as well. To them, the minerals and tech that is used is a drain, of course, but it is one that can be replaced easily. But they simply do not have the populace, the bodies, to treat them as anything but utterly precious. It is not just the greater good in play here, it is their size, demographics and population. If you factor in as well that nearly any human can be trained, equipped and then shoved onto a battlefield, and given parameters, approximately the same level of service can be gained. While the Tau are again utterly different. The Fire caste, who are the warriors of the Tau, are but one caste and certainly not the largest, that being the Earth caste, the builders and civilians as we would see them. So their pool of combatants is even smaller than an equal population of humanity. Thus do they sacrifice some damage potential to save that far more important resource to them, their fire warriors. But now we get to the fun on the table, the hilarity I, sp I spoke of earlier. In many editions of the game now, one has had a choice when firing a plasma weapon, be it one held by a space marine, a stromilitarum guardsman, or an inquisitor or other specialist. Safe mode, or whoop mode as I call it, which is overcharged. To fire on normal mode is safe, but the damage is halved, whereas if one fires on overload mode, it means that they can do a clean double the damage to their target. But there is that one in six chance, that cube landing on a snake's eye, that means the gun has exploded or somehow malfunctioned and taken the wielder with it in a ball of sunshine. A self-created star that burns so very bright, then snuffs out almost instantly. Ah, the amount of times I have stood dice in hand, brow furrowed, wondering if it is wise to take the chance, to potentially have my warriors explode. But then I usually grin and say, let the gods decide, firing overcharged, only to then roll more snake eyes than a Medusa, and have my men, my beautiful men, all deaded. And this is the crux of the game, the fun to be had. It all relies in, in luck and risk. Now there are ways to mitigate risk, to limit its potential, but in reality it is why I always look a little bemused when people claim that they want a balanced game for a tournament, because can there ever really be a balanced game where luck and dice decide the fate of your labours? Chess, that's balanced, no element of luck. Surely that is the way to go. But each to their own, and the tournament scene can be a riot of fun and social mixing as well, so I definitely see its value. I just don't see it ever being fair, but a point to be discussed in the comments perhaps. Discussed only. But it is in the chance, that one roll of the dice to see if your man explodes or if he brings his enemy low. That is the quintessence of Warhammer, because no matter how well you plan, you plot, you measure, you maneuver, the end result always comes down to one thing alone, the throw of the dice, the numbers that show. It is all in the lap of the gods, and I would not have it any other way, for no two games are ever the same. Beautiful. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the plasma weapon, and please note that we will go into the various forms in more detail as time goes by. 
If so, then do consider liking and subscribing. And if you do, hit the bell notification button, as I would not want you to miss out. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun.